ask, what do you think draws people to reading advice columns? I, I mean, I think about this a lot because before I started as Dear Prudence, I loved reading advice. And now that I'm no longer Dear Prudence, I love reading Dear Prudence. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a little bit like, you remember that episode Homer versus the 18th Amendment where Marge says, I love parades. They bring out the best in me. Uh, excitement, joy, looking. <laughs> I, I think about that constantly, but um, I, I think that, like it's it's the same pleasure that you get from someone yelling, "There's a fight outside," and you're like, "Oh fuck, I gotta go see this." I don't know if you went to the kind of high school where sometimes people would fight outside. Catholic, Catholic old girls school. So yeah. I moved in the middle of high school from a high school where that never happened to a school where that happened like some of the time, and I felt like I had won the jackpot. I was like, "People fight here. This is terrific." I just, it was so much fun. Or like, if you hear there's a fire down the street, you're like, obviously I hope nobody dies, but I hope it's like touch and go for a minute and I want to go see it. So just like looky Lewism, just that desire to see someone else having a problem, not just because you want to watch someone suffer, it's not purely sadistic, but because it's dramatic and exciting and thrilling and there's the fun of sort of standing around. It's the same as like if somebody's car breaks down and you and a bunch of people don't know anything about cars and you all try to pass the time before AAA gets there and you're like, mm. I wonder what will happen. Maybe there's a fan belt in there. <laughs> um, just that desire to stand around and not have a problem and look at a problem and try to diagnose it, knowing that you're not going to be called on to actually solve it. That's the thing. No because skin in the game. Exactly. Like Even as the advice columnist in question, it wasn't like I was ever in a room with someone who was asking for my advice and I had to try to like talk them through it. It was always like, here's my best idea. I hope you see this. You know, because it's just like, you know, you write to an advice, you write, you sit down at your little escritoire and you write down a letter and you put a stamp on it, you put it in the mail. Uh, but you write and then what if they answer it like three weeks later? What if you're busy that day? There's no knowing if they're looking at it in real time. So uh, there's that sense of remove that I think just brings everyone a maximal sense of tinkering, but a minimal sense of responsibility. So that's reading them, but now I guess once you turn into the agony art, what was it about dispensing advice that you enjoyed? Part of it was uh, just the, the fun of getting to have a day job that involved writing, but that didn't necessarily involve coming up with a prompt and following through with it. So it felt like this is a really great day job for a person to have. I get to imagine about different people's interiority and think about ways different problems can be resolved. But it's also different enough from the other kind of writing I do that I don't finish a day of work and feel like I couldn't write anything else. Um, and part of it was also just the, the fun short-termness of it and the sense of I want to be responsible towards the person asking the question to the best of my ability. But the good news is I have no real power over them. And so when we separate, uh, I don't feel like, oh man, I might've just you know ruined someone's mm. life or decided whether or not they're gonna have a child. Like ultimately the decision is very much theirs. I can't follow up and say, this was legally binding. You have to break up with your girlfriend now because I said so. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, was itself a kind of pleasure. So this is another letter. So you, you know, one of the chapters really focuses on family because family is a complex thing for everybody. But this is one of those ones where even as you build it up, by the time I actually start reading it, I'm like, Fuck. Dear Prudence, my 27-year-old daughter and her best friend Katie have been best friends since they were four. Katie practically grew up in our house and is like a daughter to me. My daughter recently got engaged to her fiancé and announced that Katie would be the maid of honour. Katie's boyfriend is also a good friend of my future son-in-law. The problem is... Katie walks with a pretty severe limp due to a birth defect, not an underlying medical issue. She has no problem wearing high heels and has already been fitted for the dress, but I still think it will look unsightly if she's in the wedding procession, limping ahead of my daughter. I mentioned this to my daughter and suggested that maybe Katie could take a video or hand out programs, brackets, while sitting... So she doesn't ruin the aesthetic aspect of the wedding. My daughter is no longer speaking to me. We were never that close. <laughs> but this is her big wedding and I want it to be perfect. All the other bridesmaids will look gorgeous walking down the aisle with my daughter. Is it wrong to have her friend sit out? Picture perfect only, please, it is signed. And I have to say, I guffawed at the first sentence of your response, which is, I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around this letter. I encourage you to reread it and to ask yourself that time-honoured question, do I sound like a villain in a Reese Witherspoon movie? <laughs> 
I think, like you, my favorite moment in that letter is Katie's friend is like a daughter to me. And then later, my daughter and I have never been close. <laughs> <laughs>